I will say this is the smallest number of pieces that I have ever had in my closet. This is the most extreme that I've gone. Who am I? It might just make me start bawling. A palace. Well, hey friends, it's Natalie. So glad you stopped by to hang out with me today while I tackle my closet and give it essentially a makeover for the summertime. I have some serious decluttering and organization to do in there and I'm hoping by the end, I'll be able to put together a simplified and really easy summer capsule wardrobe. And I'm going to be trying out the 333 method, which I've never done before. So we'll be chatting more about that a little bit later on, as well as just sharing what's going on in my brain, my thought process for going about this project and sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way of doing this for the last couple of years, as well as some encouragement, if nothing else, that you are not alone if going through your clothing and doing closet declutters is a difficult thing for you. It's certainly difficult for me. I've been dreading this a little bit, but I'm just keeping that end goal in mind. Having it simplified and having it easy to put outfits together for the summertime is what I'm going for. And I'm so glad to have you guys along for this. So drop this emoji in the comments so that I can come say hi to you. And let's pop into the closet right now and see what's going on. Let's see what the starting point is. Welcome to my closet, which right now is being held open by a wedged sandal <laughs> because this door does not stay open with the weight of my husband's ridiculous shoe collection on it that is not working. So this is actually something that's really high on my priorities to figure out and to reorganize. I'm hoping to get rid of this shelf thing. I thought it'd be a great thing. You guys saw me put it up here and you know what, at first it worked, but now not so much. And honestly, this rack is sort of setting the tone for the rest of this closet. We just have a lot of stuff in the wrong place, systems that could definitely be improved, a random apple that a child put on top of my dresser. <laughs> and then when you open the dresser, it's definitely a little bit too full, a little bit disorganized. My clothing in this closet is from here to that corner. This is the hanging clothing. This is the folded, folded is a very loose term, <laughs> clothing that I have in here. And then I have some shoes that I've literally just piled on the bottom and random seasonal stuff on these shelves. This could be so much better. So I think I'm going to start with a method that I have used in the past that has absolutely worked for me. If you watch my Messy to Minimal series, you may have seen the video that I did last year in our old house in my old closet, where I tried out Dawn the Minimal Mom's method of reverse decluttering her closet. It was an amazing fit for me. It totally made sense. It jived with the way my brain works. Instead of taking everything out of my drawers, everything off the hangers, making a big pile on my bed, and going through everything piece by piece that way, we actually sort of do the reverse and pick out only the very specific things here that I know I want to have in my 33 piece capsule wardrobe and put those few pieces on my bed to start out with. Then I will go and weigh that against the pieces that I have in my wardrobe that would be considered extra outside of that capsule that I put together and then weigh them against each other and make swaps if I need to maybe see where I have gaps in my collection and go out and intentionally go buy what I need. And the whole goal in the end is to be able to get rid of what I don't need. And when I say get rid, I don't mean throw away. I mean, give to friends and family, donate to charity shops. So that is what I'm going to be doing first. I'm going to pick out my favorites, put together a little capsule wardrobe on my bed. This worked excellent for me last time. And right now I have a few too many things. I have been through some body changes. I've been through a recent flare up of my chronic illness. And as I was putting together a wardrobe of sorts for the summertime, I ended up acquiring more pieces than I will realistically need in an effort to find what works for me. I have waistband issues and bra band issues. And those of you who have chronic pain or chronic illness will be able to relate to this. Those of you who don't deal with that, it, this might seem like totally crazy, but my clothing is a huge trigger for the chronic abdominal migraines that I get. And I am always working toward finding things that won't cause that illness for me. And let me tell you, it's like a part-time job just to even make that happen. And then in the 
the end, I end up with a pile of stuff that didn't work out that I either need to return if I'm still within the return window or pass on to someone that it will work for. So that's what we're dealing with going into this whole project. I'm gonna pick out my favorites and we will go from there. So I first heard about the 333 method about a decade ago. It was started by Courtney Carver of the blog Be More With Less, and it was gaining popularity back when I had about 90% more stuff in my collection. And back 10 years ago when I first heard about it, I thought there is no way that I could live with 33 pieces for three months. It seemed to me like extreme minimalism, if I'm being honest. Fast forward 10 years later and a more simplified home, we've gotten rid of so much stuff and I've already been putting together wardrobes like this, just not using this specific method with having sort of a seasonal bin. I think that this is doable for me. The cool thing is that Courtney takes this really easygoing approach to sharing about this method and she has stated that it's not a set list of rules or do's and don'ts. Some people can get away with having as little as 20 to 25 pieces and depending upon your lifestyle, some people need some between like 45 and 50 pieces. I am going to try to stick to that 33 piece mark, which includes clothing pieces and accessories and shoes that I'm going to be making outfits with. So shirts and pants, dresses, shoes and sandals, as well as any hats, sunglasses, and the purse that I carry. It does not include loungewear, sleepwear, um, socks, underwear, bras, that sort of thing. Although I will be taking a look and doing some decluttering of those categories because if I'm here, I might as well and free up even more space. But I'll do like Courtney does and not include those things in my wardrobe count. And I also won't be including workwear, like outdoor, the pair of jeans that I wear when I'm painting or the shirt that's ripped up that I wear in the garden that has axle grease on it. Those are not things that I am making outfits with and I do have enough space to store those things without really having to take stock. We'll see how close I can get to that 33 piece number. I'm eager to see how this system works and the way this really works is by having a seasonal bin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Step one of this process, get the first iteration of my 33 piece capsule wardrobe onto my bed, separate those pieces out of what I have left in my closet. And now step two is going to be to take everything else out and actually not put it back in, not put things back on hangers, not put things back in the drawers. These items will end up in one of two places, the first spot and the one that I'm going to be focusing on the most is the donation pile. And then everything else will be thrown into one tote. I'm limiting myself to one tote. Using the container concept that I learned from Dana K. White um, of the blog, A Slob Comes Clean. Her methods are great as well. I like to pick other people's methods and find what works for me using a combination of things. And if you guys saw the video last year where I went through my wardrobe using Dawn's reverse decluttering method, then you saw me completely eliminate my seasonal clothing bin. Back then, I was using a seasonal clothing bin as an excuse to keep too much clothing. It was a way for me to hold on to things that I actually was not going to wear but delay those decisions. And I've learned a lot over the past couple of years about not delaying decisions. So I'm going to be making decisions right now to eliminate things out of my wardrobe. And hopefully when I dive back into this bin at the beginning of the fall season, when stuff gets a bit cooler around here and I want my cozy cardigans and I want my baby alpaca sweater back in my collection, I won't be sifting through so many things like I have in the past. This 333 method might just bring back the seasonal bin into my life. I don't know. I'm giving this method its best shot and I'm gonna try to closely adhere to the prescribed method and how they do it. Again, it's not a set list of rules and do's and don'ts, but I am gonna try to 
give it my best shot and, and give it the best chance that I can, which means we're bringing back the seasonal bin for this time around. So I'm gonna go into this closet and pull everything else out and put it in those two different places. Also, if I come across anything while I'm doing this, it strikes me as something that I maybe missed my first time through that I might want to include into my capsule wardrobe. I'll just kind of set that aside and do the thing that Dawn does and weigh the pieces that I've chosen to keep on my bed with something that I might want to swap out. This white blouse from Carly Jean Los Angeles that I've had for years now is one of those pieces. So I'm holding on to that for a second. One of my favorites i love this loft sweater this is one of my favorite pieces and i totally anticipate grabbing that out of the bin and putting it back on the hanger for the fall and winter season As we look in this drawer, there are a few things that's just like an absolute immediate yes. I'm gonna keep this sort of uh, pinkish, mauvish sweater. My baby alpaca sweater, loved that. This gray sweater I've had for years and years and I don't think I wore it once this fall and winter season. So it's going, bye. Something I don't think I'm gonna bring out in the fall time is these two, these are from Carly Jean Los Angeles. They're sort of like this ribbed material. I found myself wearing them less and less this fall and winter time. I just had other things in my collection that I was reaching for more. So I think I'm gonna donate these to someone who would actually wear them. I only grabbed three things to either swap out or add to the capsule. Um, this baby tee, which I already have one of those, this pink one. You know, I think I'm gonna take this tank top out. I, I cropped it to make it shorter and more flattering. Um, I think I maybe went a little bit too short with it. Yeah, okay, that's gonna get donated. So then I basically just swapped that shirt out for that one. I'm going to add this white shirt, which is the same as the black sh blouse that I'm actually wearing right now. Um, and then I'm also going to add this shirt, which I have had for so many years and worn so many times in my videos. Let's pack in the seasonal bit. Okay, I have 23 pieces in here so far that I want to bring back for the fall time. And then I'm just going to add like Christmas specific items. Snoopy winter sweatshirt, he's uh, ice skating. I have a Santa Claus face shirt. My grandpa's flannel Christmas shirt that he wore. Um, it's just so, so sweet. My grandma's Christmas sweater that I got. They're just too precious. And I know that when I open up this tote and see those on the top, it might just make me start bawling, but I know it's it's happy tears. It's it's very sweet. Um, and then I have a pair of Christmas pajama pants that I pretty much only wear during the Christmas season, but I always want them and I've had them for years and years. And one pair of KJP wool Christmas socks. And keeping these things out in my closet just to wear them like two or three months out of the year doesn't really make sense, which is one of the reasons why I like having a seasonal bin. And this time around, what, how many did I just add to that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what was I at? 24, so that's 30 pieces total going into the bin. Just a sweater, <laughs> 31 pieces, okay. <laughs> and I'm actually neatly folding everything so that when I open it up, it's not a wrinkled crazy mess. And that it's actually easy to sort through everything in here. I don't wanna add to my stress later on. So there's that, there's the seasonal bin and we'll see how this works out. And here is the donation pile so far. I still have yet to go through loungewear, pajamas, workout clothing, as well as grubby clothes. So this pile will grow. Does anyone else's heart go pitter patter when they see a growing pile of things to donate? 
just me. I'm just gonna pop you guys up on the tripod and just pull what I'm going to actually wear and probably just donate the rest when it comes to uh, workout stuff, loungewear, pajamas, and maybe some workwear. And when I say tripod, I actually mean the top of the shoe rack that I'm going to be getting rid of. Wow, <laughs> that was so much work. And I'm honestly feeling very overwhelmed right now in spite of the fact that I have made so much progress. I think maybe I'm just having like that decision fatigue and I'm just feeling kind of burnt out. And honestly, there are a lot of emotions involved with dealing with clothing, especially when you have body issues that prevent you from being comfortable in your clothing. It's just, it's a whole other thing and i'm actually grateful for the very strict parameters for what i choose to keep and what i choose to part with and i am going to show you what is staying what's in my 333 wardrobe but before i do that i need to do what i can to kind of take care of the chaos of this corner over here like i showed you this shoe shelf ain't working let's approach our decluttering and organization projects with humility and with grace especially if we're doing it to serve someone other than ourselves. I put this shoe shelf here to help Weston out. It's not helping him. He hates putting his shoes here. A lot of the time they fall down onto what I've got going on down here. I put this hat rack here for him to put his hats on. It doesn't work for him. He's been throwing them up there or any old place in our bedroom. This thing makes the door heavy, so it always closes. We can't keep it open. So when I'm coming in here with laundry, it's always, you know, closing before I can get in there. Not to mention the fact that shoes fall down from it all the time and literally hit me on the head. And that's just kind of bumming me out. So before I give you the tour of the capsule wardrobe, let's take care of this corner. I think I'm gonna make a hat shelf for him and I think I'm gonna get his shoes on these shelves because I certainly don't use these shelves very much. I use like the bottom two and I have random stuff on the others. So I think I can share. I think that will work. Okay, shoes are organized for Weston. I ended up adding extra shelves in between these um, and I haven't bolted the shelves down yet because we're just trying this out to see if this works. I literally doubled the amount of storage I have on these shelves by using these little Rubbermaid Melamine shelves um, from my pantry project <laughs> that I did a few months ago. I had some of this left um, and then I have my shoes just down here on the bottom. These are my capsule wardrobe shoes and then I have some like out of season um, boots and, and stuff like that in that little basket. Um, but this looks so much better. The top of my closet right now is looking a little bit crazy as is the bottom down there on Weston's end. So uh, he said he's going to tidy this up. I think I'm just going to kind of tidy this up really quick and then I will give you the tour. Okay, let's take a look. Ah, as you can see, a bit has changed off camera um, over the past couple of days. I did a bit more rearranging and after clearing out so much, 
I felt like moving Weston's dresser to have both of our dressers side by side would make this space a bit more functional to walk into. And I was right, if I do say so myself. And look at that. She even vacuumed the floor. Who am I? I will say this is the smallest number of pieces that I have ever had in my closet. This is the most extreme that I've gone. But honestly, this is the happiest I have ever been with how my closet functions and looks and how I feel about the options that I have for outfits for this season. So let me give you a tour of where we're at now, how many pieces I ended up with, and a few of my thoughts having gone through this first time of doing this 333 method. So all of my clothes are now over on this rack specifically. And um, this is just my stuff. And Weston, since he has about twice as many hanging clothes that I do, he has these two sides, sort of this corner situation. And I think this is gonna work out so much better. Um, over here, I have my non-capsule things that I'm just gonna keep out and keep hanging some outerwear stuff. Um, I'm not making outfits with this outerwear. I usually just put an outfit together and then if it's a rainy day in Seattle, I throw a jacket on out the door. Um, something else I'm not making outfits with weekly or even monthly for that matter is my more formal clothing and this is for those weddings or events or holidays and stuff that I'll pull pieces from but this right here what is hanging between these two brackets is what I'm putting my capsule wardrobe together with. This is the hanging clothing. We'll get to the drawers in a minute. Starting with this maxi dress, um, which is from the Universal Thread brand at Target. I thrifted this actually, and I've had it for years. Um, this is a newer piece to my collection. It's this short romper. It's linen. It has this cute little drawstring waist, so I can adjust that throughout the day if things get a little bit more bloaty. Um, I have these two dresses. They're from the Knox Rose brand at Target. They're super easy, light, and breezy. They go with lots of different things, so I love these. I have one skirt, which is really cute, and it's the one skirt of all of the ones that I had that actually is flattering on me. I'll talk a little bit more about skirts in a bit. I've showed these two lightweight cardigans before. I've raved about them on my channel, so I won't stay here too long. They're just the perfect thing if you live in a climate where um, during the summertime you just need to like cover up your arms in the morning or the evening. I have a couple of these washable silk tank tops from the Quince brand, which has quickly become one of my favorite clothing brands. Love it so much. These are real silk, um, and so they have that beautiful hang. They're nice and light and airy. They go with everything. I have the black and the creamy white, um, but then you can pop them in the washing machine and they don't have to be dry cleaned or anything. They're super, super comfy. I practically live in these. Um, and I actually have a referral code to Quince. It's not that I'm like working with them, that's not sponsored or anything. Um, it's just a referral code, just like any other brand that you refer your friends to. I think you get 20 bucks and then they send me 20 bucks. You guys have seen this shirt in so many of my videos. I've had this for years and years. Um, and I continue to make outfits with that one. Um, this is the hanger for the shirt that I'm currently wearing, my rails. Uh, sort of plaid linen button-up short sleeve shirt. I have another linen button-up short sleeve shirt. This is the Thread and Supply brand. I thrifted that one, but they sell this uh, brand at Nordstrom. Then my two Carly Jean Los Angeles short sleeve button-up collared shirts. These I make so many different outfits with. Casual as well as a little bit more dressy. There's the white one. There's the black one, and then last but not least, this is also from the Quince brand. This is my chambray button-up long sleeve shirt that I kind of wear like a cardigan. I wear it open front. Um, I feel like Chessie from The Parent Trap whenever I wear it kind of gives me that 90s vibe, and I love it. This is another piece that I absolutely live in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces. That's what's hanging. And then over here in my drawers, which has a little bit of uh, tape scum on them still, I still need to clean that off. I need to get some goo gone or something. And that's from when I taped the drawers closed when we moved. Um, that will be something I'll do at another time. But this is what I have for pants. Three pairs of shorts. They're all the linen shorts from Old Navy. They're the best, but it's actually last year's or the year before's version of it 
that's best. I have some from this year that aren't quite as good, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, and then I have three pairs of long pants. Two of them are the linen pants from Old Navy. These are the crop length. Love them so much. I get them in the petite crop length because my legs are so darn short. And then I do have one pair of Levi's jeans which I will wear occasionally if I'm having a less bloaty day. Uh, I really have trouble with jeans, really have trouble with flies and buttons or flies and snaps. It's tough for me. And then as far as uh, like t-shirts go, I kept three of those. I have two of them are the baby tees with the lettuce hem. They're cropped length, but I buy them oversized so they're not so short on me. Um, and these are from American Eagle. And then I have this shirt, <laughs> which keeps showing up. I've thought about decluttering this so many times, but I keep, I've literally pulled it out of my declutter pile to put back into my collection. I want to say two or three times now, um, I keep reaching for it. This used to be a dress. It used to be like this little t-shirt jersey dress. And uh, then my butt got much bigger when I became healthier and it no longer worked as a dress so I cut it off and turned it into a t-shirt and it's still still one of my faves and that's it so that is uh, what did I say up here 15 plus six pairs of pants is 21 22 23 24 pieces and then let's take a look at shoes this shelf right here like I was showing you is capsule wardrobe shoes we've got basic tennis shoes my nude flats from the Rothy's brand which I absolutely love these are washable which is even better um, I have this pair of <laughs> these basic, I mean, tell me you were married in 2012 without telling me you were married in 2012. I bought these for our honeymoon, which uh, in a week is our 10th anniversary, and I still have those shoes, and every time they make the cut, I wear them if I need something a little bit more low profile and feminine um, and more minimal than my everyday Birkenstocks that I wear, which are actually out in the living room right now by our front door. I would be wearing them right now if I wasn't barefoot. This bin just has um, some, like I have my leather boots that I wear in the fall time, my wool slippers that are too warm to wear right now. I have a couple of pairs of like formal heels in there when I would wear my formal shoes, which does not need to be out or a part of my capsule. Um, I'm actually exploring a different option when it comes to heels and formal shoes, which I will update you guys in later. Um, I'm going to put a specific brand to the test and report back. Um, and then I just have my pair of sort of like dirty muck shoes. I put these on when I don't want to wear sandals outside. Like if Weston and I are working in the yard, we're actually going to do some tractor work today and I'll probably pop those on. 24 plus four is 28 pieces. And then I think since that's it as far as clothing goes we'll just go ahead and add to the number by the one baseball cap that i have the one sun hat that i have because yes i actually do use these to create outfits with so that's 30 pieces and you want to make it 31 by adding my one pair of sunglasses that i own maybe you decide. <laughs> I'm not using sunglasses as a way to um, put an outfit together. Just like I don't use a purse to put an outfit together. Let's chat about my purse. So those who have been around for a while know that these, especially this one, have been around for a while. These are the Michael Kors mini Selma purses, and I am someone who adamantly carries a small purse. It's kind of that container concept like I was saying before with uh, the bin of seasonal stuff. I will fill a purse to capacity no matter what size it is, and so in order to keep the collection small, I keep a small purse, um, but the strap on this thing is starting to fall apart. I hardly ever had the black one out. The inside was starting to shred. I've literally had this since before I had kids. And there's really no way to wash it if like something spills in it. I've spilled coffee in it accidentally 
multiple times and so I got this one instead this is just about the same size it's a little taller it looks a little taller because it has this little hand strap here but it can be crossbody too this is from the Rothy's brand it's the same brand as those uh, pointed toe nude flats that I showed you and it's washable I've actually already washed it because I've already spilled coffee in it I don't know what it is about me in purses but I uh, I spill coffee in them for whatever reason and it fits everything that my other purse fit and it works so so well and I only need this one I really I'm not using a purse to put together an outfit I put the outfit together and much like whatever jacket I'm wearing or my one pair of sunglasses I throw it on and go out the door and I don't really care. So this nice neutral is what I chose. They had several different colors, but I chose that one because it goes with everything. And then the only time that I would switch out my purse or want a purse that kind of coordinates with my outfit is when I'm wearing a formal outfit. I'm going out for a nice evening or going to a wedding and I have just a couple of like beaded vintage clutch purses that I use for that that I have up in a little basket up there um, but when it comes to like a capsule sort of situation if I was counting a purse this would be it and does that make it 31 pieces 32 pieces I don't know I'm right in there and like I said earlier the number for your capsule using this 333 method is really based on what works best for you I am under that 33 mark just because I don't really need anything else and that gives me a little bit of headroom for anything that I might want to add should a need arise or should I discover that there's a little gap here before I show you a couple of things that I'm getting rid of and uh, the seasonal bin let me just show you that I actually decluttered a lot out of my um, workout pajamas loungewear drawer I ended up with only two pairs of pajamas one workout outfit a shirt and a pair of shorts two sweatshirts two sweatpants that's literally it doing all of this and then especially putting together the seasonal bin freed up so much room in my dresser I'm actually considering going down to this size of dresser but that would require buying a new dresser and I'm the sort of person and I've shared it before use what you got and I got this tall dresser for now and it's working I uh, am using this bottom empty drawer that I freed up to store extra hangers um, uh, my steamer that I have for our clothing, my little fuzz buster tool, and then any extra drawer dividers. I also have like a suit bag in there for if we travel, but also need to bring nice clothing with us, which that happens every once in a while. Okay, that is the capsule wardrobe. That is the closet. I did leave a spot up there. Whoop, I'm falling down. I did leave a spot up there for this bin for seasonal clothing. I found a couple more things when I was going through everything here in this corner of chaos, which is working out so much better now. And Weston loves the shoe organization that I put in there. I found my puffer long coat that I've had for years and years. I found my pumpkin pattern little t-shirt that I wear when we carve pumpkins. And I found my pair of KJP wool pumpkin socks. And that completes my seasonal bin for this season, this time around. Doing a spring and summer wardrobe video. <laughs> I sure did talk a lot about next season's stuff, but I think that is a really good example of why we need to keep the whole picture in mind. If we live in an area with different seasons, if we would be using sort of a seasonal rotation, just focusing on this current season might not be enough if you want to set yourself up for success for the next season. So stay tuned for the next closet clean out declutter, uh, the next time I put together the capsule wardrobe for the fall um, and winter time, because I'll be giving you an update on how this whole 333 thing is working for me so far. One of the things I'm not doing with the 333 method is doing it for three months. I'm about a month behind. It's June, July 1st. I could have started this on June 1st um, and I don't anticipate October 1st will be uh, still wearing summer stuff. So 
see you in a couple months for the next closet clean out. Uh, let's just take a look really quickly at some of the trends that I am noticing here with this time around of getting rid of stuff. This pile right here is just evidence of Natalie getting very honest with herself and coming to grips with the fact that stuff I want to wear, I'm not always able to wear. Um, and that I also use uh, my non-counted categories as an excuse to have too much stuff like my workout stuff. I'm getting rid of so much workout clothing um, and just keeping the one shirt and one pair of pants. So that's a lot of what I'm getting rid of. I'm getting rid of everything that is denim except for that one pair of vintage Levi pants that I showed you. Um, I just can't do it anymore. I cannot wear these waistbands. They trigger abdominal migraines like nothing else in my wardrobe. I am so uncomfortable when I choose to wear them. I always regret it. It always happens to be when we're like going on a day trip somewhere and I want to look cute and I want to put my denim on and then halfway through the trip, I am miserable. So Natalie's getting honest with herself and I am saying goodbye to these. They fit from a technical standpoint, but not from a physiological standpoint standpoint. So I am moving on. Um, another thing I am moving on from and getting really honest about are skirts, especially full length skirts. I always have these big ideas about how cute a full length skirt would look on me. And then I put them on and I feel like a frump. So I'm moving on from those two, as well as the old Navy linen pants that I actually purchased this year that are different than the ones that I've had from years past. Um, the waistband is much more rigid and structured, which as I said, it doesn't work for me. I don't like that the drawstrings are on the inside. I think it's flattering to have them on the outside. You can have a little bow there and adjust them as you get bloaty or less bloaty throughout the day. So those, that's another category of stuff that I'm moving on from. And there's more in this pile that sort of fits into that. Amongst other things that it's just like, hey, it's worn out or hey, I don't wear this anymore. So I would say half of this pile here represents older stuff that I've had for a long time that I'm just getting really real about and moving on from. And then the other half are things that I've purchased with the hope that they will work, but unfortunately they just don't. So I'm going to bag all of this up and pass it on to my sisters first. And then whatever they don't want, we will be taking on to a charity shop. I feel like doing a closet declutter is one of the most rewarding and satisfying areas of the home to tackle. We need clothing every day. We wake up in the morning and whether we're wearing just like our junky work clothes or our sweatpants or a nicer outfit, there's always a choice to be made. And man, limiting our choices it goes so against what sounds like it's going to help, but in my experience, oh my gosh, it really does help. If I could go back 10 years ago when I first heard about the 333 method and tell myself that it is possible, that I can reasonably limit the number of clothing that I keep on hand and therefore totally expand my ability to put outfits together to make it so much faster and easier and carefree to do it. 20 year old Natalie could have totally benefited from this and if you are someone who has been waiting to take the leap um, you don't have to use the 333 method. You don't even have to do like a specifically capsule wardrobe where everything coordinates, but consider bringing that number, consider bringing that inventory down. I can do it with my health issues and my problems that I have surrounding the specific pieces that I keep in my wardrobe. I am convinced anyone can do it. So if you need some more encouragement, if you need some more motivation, I have several closet decluttering, closet clean out videos that I have done in the past. I will link that for you guys in the description box. You can kind of see this progression and see this journey that I've been on. And it's a journey that I will continue to stay on. I'm really curious to see if this seasonal bin bringing that back into my life is going to work out for me this time around. It didn't work out for me before, but I'm approaching it in a very different way with what I have learned and the support that I've given myself by researching and watching people who have done it before or who are encouraging. So I'm going to link those people too. Go check out Dawn, the minimal mom. Her channel is amazing as well as be more with less 
Courtney's blog. She has been awesome and it's pretty exciting to try something new and I'm really, really happy with the results. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love that so much. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and turn that bell notification to all notifications. That way you don't miss my next video, whether it's a messy to minimal episode or a day in the life video where I do other decluttering projects and stuff in there. It's been great to have you guys along for this project as always. So thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel and I'll catch you later.